Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our channel. Today, we bring you a groundbreaking development in international maritime security. The NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy have joined forces to tackle a significant challenge in the South China Sea. In this video, we will explore their collaborative efforts to safeguard the Spratly Islands. Join us as we dive into this momentous operation and shed light on its implications for global geopolitics. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. Let's get started. The Spratly Islands, located in the heart of the South China Sea, have been a focal point of territorial disputes among neighboring nations. With its strategic location and abundant natural resources, the Spratly Islands have attracted considerable attention from various stakeholders. Rising tensions in the region have prompted the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy to collaborate and ensure stability in these vital waters. The NATO Navy, a collective defense alliance comprising 30 member nations, and the formidable U.S. Navy, known for its global presence, have combined their capabilities to address the growing concerns in the South China Sea. This joint operation signifies a resolute stance against any attempts to disrupt peace and maritime freedom in the region. Taiwan criticized China for damaging peace and stability in the region after Beijing ended three days of large-scale military drills on Monday. China willfully uses military exercises to undermine peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Taiwan's foreign ministry said. Meanwhile, the United States deployed a naval destroyer into waters claimed by Beijing, a move that elicited an angry response from China's military. Missile destroyer U.S. Emilius illegally intruded into the waters adjacent to the Meiji Reef in China's Nanja Islands without the approval of the Chinese government. Spokesman for the Chinese military's Southern Theater Command, Chen Junli said in a statement, he went on to say that Beijing's Air Force followed and carried out surveillance of the vessel. The U.S. Navy said its guided missile destroyer had conducted a navigational rights operation and was consistent with international law. This freedom of navigation operation upheld the rights, freedoms, and lawful uses of the sea, the U.S. Navy said in a statement. China launched the drills dubbed United Sharp Sword in response to last week's meeting between Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen and U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and said it was a stern warning. The meeting took place after Tsai stopped in California on her way home, having completed a trip to Central America. Beijing considers the democratically self-governed island of Taiwan as its own and has threatened to take it by force. Washington has no formal diplomatic relations with Taipei, however, the U.S. is also Taiwan's most significant political and military backer. Taiwan's defense ministry said that as of 6 p.m., 1,000 GMT, it detected 12 Chinese warships and 91 aircraft. Although China's Eastern Theater Command has announced the end of its exercise, the military will never relax its efforts to strengthen its combat readiness the Taiwanese ministry said in a statement. Earlier on Monday, the ministry said that it had registered 70 PLA aircraft and 11 Chinese naval vessels from China's military by 6 a.m., 2200 GMT, and said its armed forces were monitoring the situation closely. Taiwan's military said that 35 of the detected aircraft had crossed the median line of the Taiwan Strait. China which considers Taiwan part of its territory, said it concluded its military maneuvers near the self-ruled island. It is a serious warning about the provocative activities of Taiwan's separatist independence forces and their collusion with foreign forces. China's foreign ministry spokesperson Wang Wenden said, the last day of the drills included exercises simulating sealing off the island nation and that one of China's two aircraft carriers the Shandong also participated in today's exercise. Chinese state television reported that aircraft, including nuclear-capable H-6 bombers armed with missiles, and warships performed drills to form a multi-directional island-encompassing blockade situation. Indeed, there is worry U.S. industry cannot keep up with the demand of providing weapons assistance to Ukraine to fight Russia's invasion, while keeping U.S. weapons arms inventories at adequate levels. 
Admiral Daryl Cottle, commander of U.S. Fleet Forces Command, last week called on the nation's defense industries to step up their game, saying you're not delivering the ordinance we need. It's so essential to winning. And I can't do that without the ordinance, Cottle said at a symposium in Washington, adding that the U.S. is going against a competitor here and a potential adversary. That is like nothing we've ever seen. In an online forum last week, Cottle's boss, Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Mike Gilday, also noted the numbers problem the U.S. faces in a potential Pacific conflict. The United States Navy is not going to be able to match the PLAN missile for missile, Gilday said. And if the U.S. Navy can't match China's missile for missile, or ship for ship, Tangredi wonders where it can find an edge. U.S. leaders must ask themselves to what extent they are willing to bet on technological without numerical superiority in that fight, he wrote. I do not say that a smaller technologically superior fleet could never defeat a much larger fleet. I only say that with the possible the exception of three cases in the past 1,200 years none has. In this collaborative endeavor, the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy aim to reinforce international maritime norms and ensure the freedom of navigation in accordance with the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea UNCLOS. By actively patrolling the Spratly Islands and surrounding waters, they seek to maintain a stable and secure environment for all seafaring nations. Both navies have undergone extensive training and conducted joint naval exercises to enhance their interoperability and coordination. These exercises include strategic planning, communication drills, and simulated scenarios to prepare for various contingencies. The synchronized efforts of the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy ensure a swift and effective response to any challenges in the region. Beyond its military implications, this joint operation opens avenues for enhanced diplomatic engagement among nations involved in the South China Sea dispute. Through dialogue and negotiation, the aim is to foster greater understanding and resolve conflicts peacefully. By working together, the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy set an example for collaborative problem-solving in complex geopolitical contexts. As we witness this historic moment of cooperation between the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy, it serves as a reminder of the critical role that maritime security plays in our interconnected world. By safeguarding the Spratly Islands and upholding the principles of freedom of navigation, these naval forces contribute to global stability and prosperity. That concludes our coverage of the NATO Navy and the U.S. Navy's joint operation to safeguard the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. We hope this video has provided you with valuable insights into this crucial moment in international relations. Remember to like this video, leave a comment below, and share it with others who may find it interesting. Subscribe to our channel for more thought-provoking content. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.